Hello, this is Dreaded in today's video topic. In this video, we are going to be talking about a few experimental builds that I have planned for 1.1, builds that I eventually want to play, and I don't really have time to cycle start them, of course, because I'm going to be cycle starting Avalanche. The link to that build will be down below, by the way. But these are builds that I eventually want to play, and they're on my radar. Now, if you want to cycle start these, you can. They are cycle starterable for the most part, but I want to let you know I'm not recommending you to do so per se. These are just things I'm putting out there because I want to show my community what I've been working on because, you know, they like seeing what I cook up. So that's what this video is going to be. So if you end up playing with something like this and ends up being a terrible time, I am not liable for your discomfort. Now, with all that being said, if you haven't already, I'd heavily suggest leave a like of the video and subscribe to the channel as that is the best way of currently supporting content like this on YouTube and it's the best way of currently supporting me. Now, let's go and talk about these three builds, shall we? So the first build that we are going to be talking about is Storm Totem. So I have actually played Storm Totem in the past in 0.9. That feels like a long time for me, but it was just like a, maybe a year ago. And that build was great. It did a lot of damage. It had a lot of fun. The idea would be to utilize one big storm totem and buff it with upheaval, storm crows, and do a lot of damage. There is gameplay of this build, so if you want to go down in the description, there will be a link to that video where you can see what it looks like. But trust me, the damage is through the roof of this build. So let's talk about it more in detail. So the first thing that has changed that has made this so much better is going to be the node down here, Thunder Totem. So this node didn't really exist before. It existed, but it was not good at all, like whatsoever. But now when you have at least three totems, you can summon, uh, you can consume up to five totems whenever you summon a storm totem to create a thunder totem. This is going to make it so that you get a bunch of more health damage duration and size for the totem, which means you have more health for the totem, more damage and more duration, which is great as those are all things you want. Cause not only does the totem last longer, so you don't have to summon it as often. It does more damage. So you kill more things, right? It also like just feels better, much better overall, right? If you don't know, the way that this build works is we take one Storm Totem here, we utilize Storm Crows to buff it with Aspect of the Crow and Arborist. We get a bunch of flat stacks, we get minion cast speed everywhere, and get a bunch of flat stacks of spell lightning damage on our totem, and that is used to deal a very large amount of damage. Then we also buff it up with Upheaval, which gives you 15% more damage uh, per time you hit it for four seconds. Uh, this scaling with attack speed can get a lot of more damage out of it. And now, of course, we also have this massive more damage modifier from Thunder Totem. So we can actually summon five totems with Thorn Totem, uh, then sacrifice them with uh, Memories of Aterra, get our mana back uh, for the most part, summon a thunder totem and go to town on it it's going to be great i think it's going to be phenomenal another thing that has changed that has buffed this build is as you can tell we're actually playing around health regen now that is because of the changes to the shaman passive tree so the biggest change here is going to be access to iron bark not only does it give us a lot of hp and health it also gives us uh, a large amount of flat health regen so if we have 100 like 90 uh health uh, 90 attunement we'll get 30 flat health regen this is a good base on top of the health regen blessing from lagan that on top of everything else here ends up making it uh feel way better to go health regen on a build like this we don't have to go healing anymore overall just much better overall just Oh, like across the board, being able to play with health regen and eventually going into a vessel of stripe setup, being able to pump up our storm totems damage to the moon and just overall just really good so far. And that's going to be great. Now, another thing that's going to be cool is uh, in storm totem here, there's actually another new node and that's going to be the node here, unmatched storms. So how this works is it's going to replace the cast of uh, storm totems for storm bolts instead. Now, the problem that I have with this node is it has negative 80% cast speed, which means that you're going to be casting like the storm bolts way slower than normal storm bolt. 
I mean, normal uh, storm totem. The reason why this is such a problem is, you know, you can have infinite amounts of damage, sure, right? Like you could one shot everything ever, but if your cast speed is too slow, your clear is going to be poo poo either way. So in theory, it might actually just be worse to go unmatched storms. Now, don't get me wrong, this is going to do a very large amount of damage because not only are you going to get the flat damage for attunement, you're going to get the uh, uh, all the modifiers inside storm uh, like storm bolts, like the more damage per mana. You're going to get all the the pen, the more damage, just everything, right? Then that's going to all multiply with all of the modifiers from us. Uh, like storm totem here like exploit weakness here uh, st uh this note here intensity and thunder totem all that's going to multiply with the gathering storm multipliers and that's going to lead to your storm totem hitting like an absolute truck the problem is it's clear it might be bad because it might be just too slow to hit things so we'll see how it feels uh if anyone actually ends up playing this build and plays around with the gathering storm node please let me know and tell me if it's good or not and we can try it and we can like update this planner but this is definitely a build that i actually plan on playing this patch so we'll eventually get to talk about it but yeah i'll leave this planner down below like i said all these planners are experimental so um you have been warned be cautious but i think this one's going to be a real banger this is the second build that i theory crafted for this patch the idea is going to be we're going to be using Aberrath's command so this is a new scepter that makes it so your void cleave is instant and no longer is a movement skill it no longer has a weapon requirement so you can use it with the scepter and other than that, that's mainly what we care about here, and also that it is on a scepter. The reason why we care about this is we can actually cast a Void Cleave while channeling. So we can actually attack with Void Cleave while channeling Warpath specifically. And the reason why this is so important is not only can we get the massive amount of base crit with a sword, so we can cap our crit with Void Cleave, we can get the Fire Pen with a scepter, which is great because we're running a scepter, and then we can turn void cleave into fire using hellish chasm right that's gonna be great so that already is great but then we can also utilize the more damage per bleed we can use the more damage for time rot because we can actually reach that camp we can get all the massive more damage multipliers here we get the more damage after warpath because we're always warpathing with this and in theory uh this should hit like a truck it should hit really hard and of course we can run you know normal like weapons and all the other slots and stuff like that and that should be a lot of damage overall. Like all of that combined should be a lot of damage. Now this one is not a cycle starter, not cycle starter viable, but there are plenty of paladins you can cycle start. And then once you get access to Aberas command, you can swap into this build. Uh, and this is definitely a build I want to play and push next patch because Void Cleave should literally just be like, just smacking things. Like not only are you getting like the, uh, like about like 140% like, more damage with time rot right we're getting the like 120 percent more damage with this because we can cap the bleeds and time rot very easily with warpath we get all these more damage modifiers and we're turning it to fire up uh, and then we get the fire pen inside warpath the base crit like it would be very hard for you to not deal damage with this build and what's great though they're also changing channeling so the way channeling works now is Instead of it making it so it disables your mana regen, it's gonna make it so that it has like extra eight flat mana, uh, mana per second for channel, which means that it nullifies your base mana. But then eventually, if you grab mana regen on your gear in theory, you can actually end up positive in terms of mana. Now, I might need to change this planner a little bit. I might need to grab mana and mana regen on this weapon or something like that, or on my amulet. Somewhere around here, I might have to grab some extra mana regen to make the build feel a little bit better overall. But I think that this, like, as long as you manage to make the Void Cleave feel good, get some cooldown on your gear, like all of this and all that, you might end up with a very, like, big banger. Because, like, Void Cleave is just, it's just going to hit really hard, man. It's just going to hit really hard. It's going to have decent clear because you're going to Void Cleave through packs and stuff like that. You're still warpathing, so you're very mobile. Um, this specific setup that I theory crafted, I was using a Null Portent because I was trying to see how easy it was to get the bonus on it. So if you don't know, essentially what this does is for each resistance you have over, you get, like, less damage taken. So if you have over uh you have over i think it's like uh i think it's like 40 percent 
uh, fire res over your cap, you'll take 20% less fire damage. And same thing for all the other ones. So it's kind of like just less damage taken overall. And it's just better than a generic like uh, Wings of Argentus or something like that, which is also an option for this build, but not entirely sure if it'll be good. But Wings of Argentus is, is actually an option for this build. It might be a cheaper way of going about this, to be honest. Uh, either way, uh, no Portent is a really strong item in general. But yeah. Aberrant's Command literally enables so many different builds, it's not even funny, and it's just a good item. It's just a generically good item, it's got generically good stats. Overall, really excited for uh, this build specifically and refining it. Like I said, I think I need more mana regen somewhere, probably inside of these strength rolls. What we can do is we can run mana regen, right? We're doing this on the fly here. Do a little bit of mana regen, right? cool and then uh yeah so that's already to like 17 mana regen and we can get mana and mana regen on the prefix of the weapon which we can go with this instead and then mana regen there you go and that's already to 19 that should feel much better overall i'm pretty excited for this build hopefully i get to play it next batch all right so this is the most experimental and spiciest build on this list I would heavily suggest not cycle starting this, but this is a build I want to play eventually. But the idea is we're going to be playing around Surf and Strike. I know, Dread, we've beaten Surf and Strike down into the ground because the rework for it was definitely not what I would call impressive. But now it might actually be really impressive because of the change to Serpent's Venom. So if you don't know, uh, Serpent's Venom is a 400 flat damage tick that, uh, you know, uh, you know, goes over time, right? We can actually speed it up utilizing uh, this note here, fast acting toxin, so we can apply it faster. You can only apply one. Pazanthus, thanks for follow, by the way. Uh, we can stack Vitality to give it more damage. We can stack Poison Penetration to make it do more damage, etc. Overall, it did a decent amount of damage. Perry played around with it, and it was like, okay. It wasn't like the best thing ever, but it was okay. But the interesting thing that has been changed, though, is this note. Now, if you don't know, this used to just be more Surf and Venom damage per Poison and Frostbite against enemies at high health. But now, the base part is just Surf and Venom damage per Poison and Frostbite, and then it's doubled at, uh, at uh, against high health, which is like, I think, like 60% health or something like that. And that's interesting. This is infinite scaling in Last Epoch. Uh... Infinite scaling has always been abused in some way or another, and we're definitely going to be abusing it here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running a Swarm Blade form setup where we run tornadoes on our Surf and Strike, right? Create a bunch of tornadoes. We're going to create, uh, you know, use the Poison Chance global from this. We're going to use tornadoes with Lightning Frequency and Gathering Storm, and also so churning orbs to uh, Storm Orbs to get even more poisons on our enemy. Uh, thorn Totems with more poisons as well. We're also utilizing Gathering Storm to get uh, even more Frostbite stuff because our Shock Chance. Uh, so Frostbites on top of the, the Tornado, on top of the Storm Orbs, right? On top of the Surf and Strike hits, okay? You can follow with me. And we're also doing a Spicy Tech. We're also running Polaris' Sacred Light. This is also another three hits per second as well. So it's even more poisons and we have a lot of poison and generic frostbite chance overall we're capping our crit with peak of the mountain because you know we can uh so that we can get benefits from this specific node here for the more damage per crit chance and the double amount right and then you know we can just stack vitality stack global poison chance stack global uh, frostbite chance stack everything stack attack speed get a lot of tornadoes get a lot of serpent's venom damage this might do a very large amount of damage it might not do a very large amount of damage we actually don't know because this node is essentially new at this point because the old version wasn't really tested much because it was just straight up bad let's be real it was just straight up bad not being able to deal damage to enemies that are half health or below was a very bad idea now we might actually have enough generic dot scaling to do decent damage to trash with our tornadoes so the clear on this build should be mediocre at best. It, it should be fine, but the Serpent's Venom, ooh, it might actually do fun stuff. If you don't know, recently, uh, there was actually in uh, Last Epoch, uh, there was someone who played a Serpent's Venom setup where they stacked a bunch of poisons and frostbites on T4 Jirla, 
and then they tapped the uh, boss with your Surfing Venom, and you got the more damage per health for Surfing Venom, right, against the boss, and that would make it so the boss was like died in one tick. You could stack it to that point. But now you just do that and you don't have to worry about that anymore. So maybe Surf and Strike's really good next match. Who knows? Like, who knows? We're going to try it out. We're going to see if it's good. I'm going to have fun with it, hopefully. But don't cycle start this. This is just an interesting build. Now, with all that being said, this has been Dread. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.